All right, welcome to the 137th St. Paul Winter Carnival, the coolest celebration on earth. Thanks for joining us tonight for the Vulcan Victory Parade. It's the Torchlight Parade. It's brought to you on uh, SPNN TV. And uh, we have with us a special guest tonight. How many came out here to root for Vulcan? Who's had enough winter? <laughs> I, I don't think it looks uh, like a tough fight for you, Volk, nope, this nope, year. So you got go. a lot of supporters. I can uh, tell you I wore red. I'm, uh, I'm ready for this. Well, we want you to have a chance to meet Vulcan and find out a little bit more about Vulcan before uh, the parade starts. Volcanus, how was your week? It was an awesome week. Uh, you know, you have to give every uh, man with, that has a shortened life uh, some hope, and that's what we did by allowing him to make it cold. But tonight's our night. We warmed it up quite nicely, and we're ready to do battle. It's an amazing job you did after this last week. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk to last year's Boreas. I think we had about 80 inches of snow during his realm. So hopefully this year we can look at a little warmer year. Yep. The, uh, what I'd like you to do tonight is tell folks a little bit about how do you get to be Volcanus Rex. Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to put in to be a Vulcan. Uh, you apply. You put in an application. Uh, they do extensive background checks on you. Um, and then you go through an interview process. Once you're selected as a Vulcan, you wear the red suit your first year on the street. Uh, you're the current crew. The second year, you become the mother hens who take care of this, uh, the red guys. The third year, you do a charm. The fourth year, you do a fundraiser. And the fifth year, you, you set up and run the Vulcan Victory Dance. Once you do that, you're a full-fledged member of uh, the Imperial Order of Fire and Brimstone, the organization that runs the Vulcans. And then at that point, you can put in to be a Vulcan King, and you have to go through the same application and selection process. Now, there's a lot more to being Vulcan than just this week. And, and you, you already described a pretty lengthy process of how you get involved. What, uh, talk a little bit about all the things Vulcan does throughout the year. Yeah, the Vulcans, I mean, through the 10 days, I mean, we get up at 6 in the morning, we go out, we do nursing homes, school visits, a lot of appearances during the day. And then at night, uh, we tend to go to F&B events, fire and brimstone events, which are Vulcan events, but then we also crash and cause havoc for uh, King Boreas at some of his <laughs> events. And, uh, we do that throughout the 10 days, but then the rest of the year, uh, we visit a lot of parades, festivals all over the country.
tell you, if you're not volunteering, you're missing out. You get a lot more out of volunteering than you ever give. Uh, festival is a great place to volunteer. Brent and I have talked about starting uh, festivalmatch.com uh, with the number of marriages we've seen come out of <laughs> come out of festival. It's a safe place to be, and you meet people you'd never otherwise meet. I've met three morticians. Those are people you generally meet once in your life, and they do all the talking. So it's, uh, it's a great opportunity. And there's lots of other places in, uh, in Minnesota volunteering, and, and we really encourage you to do it. It's great, and I think you've experienced that. Ultimately, you're, you're trying to connect with people, and festivals are, are really a wonderful place and a wonderful way to, again, get the senior living folks, the elementary children, I mean, putting smiles on people's faces, that's what this is all about, right? It is, it is. So, you just talked about volunteers, and I was a big part of your year. Can you talk a little bit about some of your favorite, your favorite experiences you've done? Yeah, I mean, I in particular loved going to the Metro Med School, and I know that's been mentioned by volunteers as well. Uh, we actually got to learn how to say happy when a car will inside ahead of time. So, to be able to connect with some of those kids was really remarkable. On top of that, I mean, volunteering for the carnival itself, getting out there and meeting the alumni has been a lot of fun as well. And you guys are to seven different states. We did. So what are some of those experiences like? My favorite was probably we went down to springtime Tallahassee, and we actually got to go on a teddy bear run where we passed out uh, stuffed animals and toys to kids with special needs um, and different disabilities and uh, advantages. And so we got to spend time in their community, which was really cool, and tell them about where they're from. Uh, this cool. I'm a little offended because, just so everyone out there knows, I actually went to Macon with Effie, <laughs> and that was not enough for her to win me or to, to win her over to Macon. So it's great that you went to the Metro Deaf School. Both Brent and I sign. Yeah, so we can do Winter Carnival. <laughs> so now, folks, we will sign the rest of the parade <laughs> in silence. The, uh, <laughs> you've got just the gloves for it. Well, you got to have the gloves. you got to have the look. You've well, got to stay warm. Another part of uh, Winter Carnival are all, all of our sponsors. We've got some great sponsors. We should, uh, should thank some of them. We'll have some in the uh, parade tonight, Spire Credit. They've been a uh, perennial sponsor. They'll be in the parade. Priority uh, Courier Experts are the sponsors of the uh, entire work week. St. Paul Hotel has been uh, headquarters for Winter Carnival for years and great uh, sponsors of, of it. That we've, you can just keep going. One of, uh, one of my favorites is the, uh, one of our kings from White Bear Country Inn and uh, Rudy's Red Eye Grill, Bill Fussard. Fussard. Billy Fussard, it's his, his queen. Fifth, it's, right. it's his, it's, is that okay. Yeah. It's his 15th year anniversary and his queen announced the day parade with us. Oh, there you go. So that was a lot of fun. So tell, you know, a little bit about the legend. You talked about the legend of Boreas. Can you, Effie, you want to tell, do you know some of that to tell these folks? I know a lot of different versions of the legend. Um, well, mine's, the, mine's the best. Over and over again. Um, and it means something different to everyone. But, you know, Boreas and Aurora find the best city on Earth. St. Paul, nestled in seven hills, and they decide that it's so magical they should throw a carnival for the wonderful people of the city. And so they bring their five brothers and sisters with them. Um, you know, so it's Boreas, Titan, Eros, Zephyrus, and Notos are the brothers of the wind. And uh, Aurora has her sisters, and they decide to host a carnival. So the prime minister puts the whole carnival together. And we have our senior royalty who bring wisdom, our juniors who bring youth and exuberance. Project Case provides merriment. And at the end of the five days, or the ten days of the carnival, Volcanus Rex decides to show up. And it sounds like he has a lot of supporters out there tonight, but I don't think he's going to win this year. And he likes to bring the heat in the summer, and, you know, we just don't like that. He brought 40 degrees since yesterday. Yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, the, uh, yeah, it was looking bad for a while. Some of the volunteer opportunities that exist within Winter uh, Carnival are like the Grand Day Parade. That was the parade we had last Saturday. The, we have parade marshals. We have banner carriers, uh, snowflake carriers. The, there's 
everything from setting up the tents up here to uh, to, to working on uh, moving everybody around and coordinating it. It takes a lot of work to put on the parade. The parade is all volunteers trying to get everybody lined up. And as you watch us uh, announcing, you'll realize they always don't come in the order we thought. So <laughs> it is a challenge. We have a lot of uh, single-minded people who come in. So. Billy, when you're not being uh, Boreas, what are you doing these days? Well, um, I am kind of retired for the most part, but I am a consultant for the United States Golf Association, so I work with uh, food and beverage vendors for the U.S. Open. And this year, the U.S. Open will be in Los Angeles Country Club in L.A. So that's kind of fun for me, but uh, otherwise, I'm pretty much retired. I take care of my, uh, my beautiful bride and um, our children uh, who are in college now, so, um, and play a little golf. Good. Do you have any future Boreas's there? Ah, uh, you never know. He wants to be a rock star right now. So <laughs> you know that well, that, that would qualify you to be Boreas. Uh, you know, I mean, I was Commodore in 2009. Brent was Commodore last year for the Minneapolis Aquatennial. I've been on the board of uh, Winter Carnival, announced these parades. I think it's more like 13 years. Yeah. So there's, there's just lots of opportunities around uh, around the festivals and uh, the other thing too you should know if you come from any of the uh, outlying areas there's I can't remember the number there's close to 200 festivals in Minnesota alone. Uh, actually I was going to say, I think you talked about it, you said you were from Farmington originally in that festival, what are some of those festivals? Yeah, so the local communities are amazing. They have opportunities for young women and men. Uh, most of them offer some sort of scholarship, so you can go to school, continue your education. Uh, they do what the Winter Carnival does on a smaller scale. And so you really visit your local communities, your big communities, your upper Peniel, your Winter Carnival, um, and they just help us build poise and confidence in our young leaders of today. They are really a lot of fun. They're where we get a lot of our princesses that end up being and queens and ambassadors who end up eventually coming to Winter Carnival or coming to Aquitania. A lot of them come from those smaller communities. And they really are a, a real high point for people in these smaller communities. Go on great festivals all through the summer, sometimes crazy ones in the winter. Yeah, and it's definitely not a requirement to be a royal lady to have come from a festival. It's just a way for some of us to get to know Winter Carnival. And you guys go back when you're with Winter Carnival, and you spend a lot of time with those young ladies. Yeah, one of my favorite memories was getting to go back to my hometown and being recognized on stage and getting to help mentor some of the new So earlier, earlier you got an opportunity to meet uh, Volcanus Rex. He's often referred to as the uh, Volk. Now they'll tell you that they're the, he's the true king of Winter Carnival. No offense, king. No offense. Of all the members of the crew, he's the only one who wears uh, black, as he talked about. The others wear red. Then we have the uh, number of the group. You have Flame, Clinker, Ash, Sooty, Sparky, E.B., and Ferdy. And, uh, you know, each of those has a, a different role. You want to talk a little bit about what they were? Yeah, so, uh, you know, General Flame is often known as Flame. He's the keeper of the flame. And the legend says that if the flame dies, then the fire king dies, and it'll be forever, which I'd be okay with. Oh! <laughs> 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 Back in 1916, uh, Ron Stewart was uh, Volcanus. He wore a, bl a warm blanket coat with a wide sash and a headpiece with devil-type horns on it. And that, that continued through 1939. In 1940, they designed the black running suit that you saw today. 
uh, and the horns were replaced by uh, two feathers at the back of the head, which I think was a, a good change. The, uh, in 1959, the feathers disappeared, so now we have uh, the, uh, the uniform that you saw today. Uh, in 1912, uh, in, in Steve Robertson, who was the, then uh, began wearing a crown following the overthrow of Boreas to signify Volcanus Rex as a victorious king. So those are, the, those are some things that happen. So after, as we come to the end of the parade, we will see the overthrow, or at least attempted overthrow, of King Boreas happening right here on the steps to my right. Uh, if he's successful, in Volcano, you know, I, just to go back, this is called the uh, Vulcan Victory Torchlight Parade, so they're pretty confident. And they have a dance after this down at the Intercontinental Hotel to celebrate their victory called the Vulcan Victory Dance. So if anything, Vulcan is confident, if not bordering on arrogance, so. I think it's a little uh, premature to uh, call this a Vulcan Victory Parade. Or, uh, or a takeover. I mean, uh, I don't know. I've heard that this uh, this Boreas and his crew are awful tough. Uh, we do. I, uh, I suspect that tonight might be the first time that Boreas will prevail and winter may stay forever. What do you uh, think about that? Boo! Right, yeah. Well, folks, we, we now have a parade. Welcome the St. Paul Police leading the way here. And uh, you can, you're gonna get to see a whole lot more activity. Right now you can see the flaming Vs and the torches. Now these are many of the uh, formal Vul former Vic Vulcans and their families carrying the Vs. Uh, these are vintage signs and uh, torches. This is a long history. We want to want to tell you you've got great support in the audience today. Everybody's been favoring a uh, an overthrow, so welcome. It's great to see all of you tonight. They look prime. They look lean. They look fit. I like their odds. You know, I, I'm not sure we're so worried about the snow. It's getting rid of that cold. Good job getting rid of the cold. And that's not all of them. Wait till we get to the end of the parade, folks. You're going to see a whole lot more. We've got... Uh, These people are all came out of hibernation. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. get that warm out, and all of a sudden, look at this. Boy, a lot of people came out. There's a lot more folks out here tonight than there were uh, last Saturday. So here come the, uh, the south winds. Welcome. These are the ooh la la. Now, Brent, this, uh, this particular wind has been known to uh, go over to the other side, hasn't he? No, I don't think so. I, I think they just yield to the pressure of the crowd. Usually by this time, everybody wants winter to go away. Uh, I don't know. Well, welcome Mayor Melvin Carter. Is he with us tonight? Oh, there he is. That's right, Vondo is uh, someplace you've done a lot of volunteering. Well, the Rondo Center for uh, Cultural Expression 
is just a fantastic organization. Well, the mayor, this is the first time I've seen a uh, an arrow carrier. I could use one of those so I knew where I was. Hey, buddy. All right, we, we have the St. Paul Fire Department here with us today. So welcome TwinCity.com community. There's an old fire truck, Tom. That is the uh, Pine Pre Pioneer Press Medallion Finder in the Captain Ken's uh, 1923 Aaron's Fox Antique Fire Engineering. Ken Souls and his hunting partner, Tony Honkamp. Congratulations, guys. Good job. They were, uh, this was not your first year, was it? And this is the uh, 100 years for the uh, Aaron's Fox Antique Fire Engine. Just imagine, that, that is a real fire engine that 100 years ago was in active service. It's awesome, and Captain Ken's baked beans are famous for St. Paul. They are. Everybody they like Captain Ken's baked beans. Yeah. All right. I do too, and you won't believe it when it comes. It's uh, it's gorgeous. Isn't it great to look out at the park on a night like this? It's just beautiful. That's a great spot you have there, Lisa. So we have our celebrity grand marshals from KSTP with us tonight. We have Matt Ballinger and Brandy Powell. Matt's an, uh, anchors three hours of news each weekday morning starting at 4.30 a.m. I'll have to take his word for that. The, uh, he's part of the family since uh, 2016. 
Brandy is uh, on the news from 4.30 to 5.30 a.m. And she's been part of it, uh, the team since January 2014. So the guard's job now is to protect the uh, king and his uh, entourage. They're all coming up, the royal family. Do you want to? And, and I'm a little concerned that we need a little backup. We might need backup guards for tonight. I don't know. I, I don't think you have enough. I'm sorry. The, uh, but maybe you can introduce the, uh, the new royal family. Oh, well, hail the royal family. So Billy, introduce them this year. Well, we got uh, our our guards for the king. We have Mike Moore, Adam Bruns, Scott Madsen, and Gordon Caney. We got Ellie Rhodes, Sergeant of the Guard, Captain of the Guard, Rick Holty. We got Prime Minister Gary Schock and Liv Swenson, Aurora, Queen of the Snows, and Boreas Rex, the 87th. You will be king tonight, Leo Lewis. Leo Lewis. Let's not forget Titan, well, this, this Prince will, of the North will Wind. will not be the first time Leo's faced a rushing group of men. So we'll see how he does. I, I will say he is more physically impressive than last year's king. Well, now, never mind that kind of talk now. He's certainly taller. There's no doubt about that. Maybe a little faster. I don't know. Let's not forget so we have our, the uh, winds on here too. Yeah, our Prince of the North Wind, Dave Schmidt. North Wind Princess, Rahila Hungiapuko. Euros, Prince of the East Wind, Lou Vogel and his Princess, Emily Maestas. Zephyrus, Prince of the West Wind, Mike Cummings and West Wind Princess, Dee Barrett. And Notos, who we'll see a little bit later, I think. He's our Prince of the South Wind, Dennis Bow and South Wind Princess, Jocelyn O'Neill. Well, King, you kind of overdid this winter thing this last week. You do not have a lot of support tonight, so it's going to be tough. Gary, be ready, be ready. It is great to see Gary out there. Gary Gary started life on the other side of the river with us Aquatennial guys. I, I've heard that Gary is going to be last man standing. He'll just stay and fight. Stay and fight. That's his motto. Stay and fight. <laughs> Gary, sharpen up that sword. We got a palace to defend here. Well, here comes another group that loves winter. The North Wind, the Titans. Hail the North! Hail Titans! Now, you know they wrote this, but they said they're best known, they're known as the best wind. And they're, all the former princes are up there as well as their princesses. So welcome, everyone. As we talked about earlier, this is these are the fraternal organizations that we talked a little bit about. These folks do volunteer work all all year long, so they enjoy these ten days of uh, winter carnival. But there's a whole lot more to it. Again, all volunteers. You know, I don't know, uh, Tom, but I think the North Winds let up a little bit today. I, it's I, got a little warm today, North uh, Wind. Yeah. Titan, what are we doing? It's getting a little warm out here. I think he, I think, looks say like Volk's pretty strong. So this, as far as I'm concerned, these are the bravest of the winds when you look at these costumes. Well, absolutely. <laughs> Up next, we have our former East Winds and their families. They're supporting the city and the Winter Carnival. They try to recruit and mentor all our new East Winds. They're protectors of the legend of Eros, who is granted by King Boreas control of the irresponsible East Wind. They've also been known as the historians in the family, and they are big collectors. They seem well, like they're the, very unpredictable, Effie. As I, say, I mean, you never know where they're coming or going, and whose side they're really on. They are tricky folks. I've lost many an item to an East Wind princess. Yeah, absolutely. 
They wear those funny boots. They, it, they're an odd group. They are. If they're your historians, they seem like untrustworthy narrators. I, yeah, I've heard rumors that they could go over too. I heard the East Wind Euros from last year had a big sense of humor. I don't know if there's any truth to that. <laughs> well, we have another group here. We have the West Winds putting out Whoa. a bit of a uh, whip show. Yeah! I'd give him a big berth. <laughs> so these cowboys represent the dependable West Wind. In the legend, the West Wind is the only brother that has never defected to the Vulcans. On this truck are former West Winds and their families, also supporters of the city and the Winter Carnival. They recruit and mentor West Wind And they're protectors of the legend of Zephyrus. Hail the West. Well, here's a fun group coming up, the Winter Carnival Junior Royalty. And if you don't know it, your mayor was a junior royalty. Yep. Yeah. He's Junior King or? King Frost. He was yep. King Frost, I believe, several years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think I'm older than our mayor, so <laughs> not too many. Well, that was a few years ago. I don't know that he wants to know how many. So, so who's our, who, who is our royalty, Effie? King Frost this year is Dominic Tamburo. Prince of Ice and Snow, Mikey Weinhagen. Princess of Snow, Aubriella Sanders. Princess of Ice, Rose Day. And the Queen of the Snowflakes, Barrett Allen. Well, we got the senior royalty now. Welcome senior royalty. Is that Doogie leading the walk out there? Hey, Wesley, how are you, King? It's our senior king, Wesley Smith. Monica Korig, queen of the Northland. Janie Lonsky, princess of the Four Winds. Wesley, you're gonna do a good job this year. Keep it up, buddy. All right, we, we have, have fun, a group coming group now coming that down. everybody yes. loves. Yes, yeah. yes. They're even more fun than listening to us talk. Tom, have you ever done that bouncing? I have not, have you? Oh my gosh, I did it a couple times this last year. And it's like you lose all sense of, of, of gravity. I have that problem when I get up in the morning. Well, there, <laughs> well, what goes up must come down. That's the only good thing. Listen, I've had both hips replaced. I think I'll just stay on the ground. Well, these guys like to like to really push the envelope a little bit. Well, they sure do. And they're fit. They, tonight, we're featuring the uh, bouncing grandma, Denise Cheetah. Wow. She's 66 years young and a former standout gymnast. Wow, that's pretty good. Let's see it, it's coming. Up she Whoa. goes. Whoa. That's what they say, up she goes. Yeah, pretty impressive. They've been around since the very first Winter Carnival back in 1861. Every year, Hail the bounce candidates team. try out for the title of Bouncing Girl and serves for a three-year term. The dream travels all over the state and their motto is throwing up since, 19, since 1886. Here comes Archie, a 1951 Ford pickup owned by Spire Credit Union. Spire Credit Union is a not-for-profit financial cooperative that has been founded as the Twin City Co-ops Credit Union in 1934. Spire is headquartered in Falcon Heights, Minnesota and currently serves over 93,000 members and controls more than nine million in assets. They're one of our sponsors this year, and Dan Stoltz is a former Boreas. That's the first time I've seen the lights. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool on there. Yeah, I'll say, that's a great addition. Archie's looking good tonight. Is Dan down there? I'm looking for him. I don't see Dan down there, but he's here somewhere tonight. I know that. Oh, there's I Dan. See the, he's, oh, he's, Hail Boreas. That's there's, just like Dan. He's uh, way he out front. He's out front yeah. of Archie. Good to see you, Dan. Dan called this parade last year. Yep, Dan, he's a, Dan called this Boris. parade. Dan's, uh, Dan was the uh, Grand Marshal on set last Saturday. Dan's been a great volunteer. His list of volunteer activity yeah. is dizzying. Yeah, we don't have time to go through what he does. No, we do here until tomorrow. So what do we have here? 
Miss Minnesota USA and Miss Teen Minnesota There they are. USA. Under blanket in the back of that truck. I think that's a good call. We've got a Madeline Helgett, Miss Minnesota 2022, and Ava Ernst, our Miss Minnesota Teen 2022. The Miss USA organization is committed to bringing pageants into the everyday lives of young women across America. And right behind her, we have Isabella Christ Christensen, Miss uh, Latina. She's surrounded by the Peruvian dancers. There we go. These first, uh, this is uh, Minnesota Latina is the first competitions established in the state exclusively for Latinas and the only one whose winner advances to the national competition. Looks like we have some pretty young dancers out there as well. They look much better than we do when they walk. Uh -huh. And we've got some more dancers here coming up from Emerge Performing Arts. Emerge is focused on developing young performers as they emerge into bold, confident, and creative artists. Well, I, I think I see something from the Minnesota State Fair. Uh, and my, my uh, I mean, it's a little, it's not exactly state fair time, is it, Tom? It is not, but you know, Fairborn and Fairchild, they're out all year long visiting different uh, activities. Each year they have over 1.5 million people come to visit our state fair, uh, ride the carnival rides, eat food on a stick, right? There's so much to do at the state fair. It's a world-class event showcasing for agriculture, industry, technology, and entertainment. Not only that, but it's a world-class venue for viewing other Minnesotans. Those two giant gophers are Fairborn and Fairchild, official mascots of our state fair. Now you got to be in the parade at the state fair, didn't you? I did, I got to be, I knighted a whole bunch of wonderful people and it was a very hot day. Vulcan really got the better of us that yeah, day. Yeah, that was a, it was a hot fair this year as I recall. But it's a great place to eat. Now we've got a great community grand marshal, Sioux Falls from WDGY. She's emceed uh, the first overthrow of King Boreas in 1997. And uh, she's been part of Winter Carnival Festivals ever since. She's also married to uh, a King Boreas. I thought he might be out there somewhere too. He was here with me last week announcing uh, John Bennett, King Boreas 68. There he is, he's out front. Where is John? He's carrying a sign. Oh, there, there he is. Go. He's actually working. Hail Boreas! <laughs> Hail Boreas! Well, Sue's here today as our community grand marshal. She's done extensive voluntary work helping with the Red Cross and many local community services. Uh, she's, as I said earlier, she's done a lot of volunteer work with Winter Carnival as well, and she considers herself the number one fan of Klondike Kate. Ooh. And speaking of Klondike Kate, here they come. There's the singers, the songstresses of merriment. I've bringing always it in. I considered myself to be the number one fan of Klondike. Oh, Kate. I love them all. Hail the Cates. I love you all. Well, welcome to our 2023 Klondike Kate Marette Bylander from the Royal House of St. Croix Hospice and Guardian Pest Solutions. Members of the Royal Order of Klondike Cates make over 100 appearances a year. They say every girl wants to be a princess, every princess wants to be a Kate. <laughs> Now, it won't be long. They'll be parading right down uh, 7th Street here for the uh, right down to CHS Field for Mr. Pat and all the St. Patrick the Lucky Charms. Boy, and the, the, award, and the, Irish. the award for the largest float goes to St. Patrick's Association. That's an impressive turn he made. Hail the Irish. We've got Mr. Pat Charlie Murray and uh, Christine Hanley, our St. Patrick's Queen. That was a cold St. Patrick's Day last year. We had a little something to do with that. Well, Brent, you might know these people coming up here. Yeah, we, both Tom and I are familiar with this group. They have the Minneapolis Aquatennial Ambassador Organization. We have our Queen of the Lakes, Ka uh, Kaya Schomburg, uh, Scott Swenson, our Commodore. Scott, wave there. 
I think he's in the back there. We've got Kezia Lee, one of our princesses. Brooklyn Warner, uh, the other princess, and our two captains, Lisa Franksman and Tammy McKenna. Represent, guys. Welcome, you know, folks. I was actually an Aquatennial candidate back in 2014. Ah, good for you. So, Brent, so, folks, in July, you can go to the Warmer Festival, if, assuming, assuming that uh, Vulcan's successful tonight, there will be an Aquatennial in July. Well, I don't think Scott particularly likes the frozen lakes. <laughs> uh, he hasn't figured that one out yet, I don't think. And here are, we... are our Minneapolis Aquatennial Senior Ambassadors. Looks like we've got Senior Commodore Clayton Miller and our Senior Queen, Shirley Peterson. You know, the hot air balloons are a lot more popular when it's below zero. <laughs> <laughs> we can sometimes feel the heat all the way up yeah. here. It really is the best part of the parade on those, those yeah. But here we have notes. our button designer. Buttons were designed this year by Gina Okok, a local muralist. Gino moved here from Nigeria when he was just seven years old and is the first black artist to design a Winter Carnival button. His work is visible on buildings around St. Paul and the Twin Cities, and he helped lead a multilingual Frogtown mural project this summer. I don't know that Gino is one heck of an artist. I watched his stuff down at the depot when they revealed the button. You're unbelievable, dude. Great job this year. Well, here's our scariest group, the Minnesota Crumpus. They, uh, it's a local 501c educational nonprofit that shows us the old Alpine tradition of St. Nick with as many Crumpus. In the culture, St. Nick rewards only good girls and boys of all ages with treats on December 6th, and he instructs his Crumpus to punish the naughty. This is a harsh group. <laughs> Krampus has been an issue in my household a couple of times. <laughs> well, if you've been good all year long, then you have nothing to fear from Krampus. For so here's a great group, the uh, Osmond Shrine. They're a perennial group that joins with us, aren't they, Brent? Yeah, we love seeing the Shriners. These guys raise money for children who have cancer. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what more you could ask for. Well, they've had some great ads on lately, too, about what they do for everyone. It's a, it's a wonderful organization. They uh, just, you know, some of the things they do, too, just to give you an idea, these folks go to a lot of parades. Some of the different groups they have is they have a drum and bugle, <laughs> easy for me to say, drum and bugle group. That's a tradition they've had since 1921. They have the Osman Cycle Corps, course, which is a uh, precision drill team made up of masons. Uh, they have the Mighty Mites. They have 220, uh, 232 Ford street rods, 436 Ford cars, uh, three micro cup cars, uh, they, in 2008, they were first place in showmanship category. Uh, this is a group that uh, not only does a lot of good, they're, they're pretty entertaining. Now, there's only so much they can do in winter parades, so we don't get to see all of the uh, various uh, groups they have. But that's even more reason to go to parades all summer, too. And go and to the circus. The, yes. And support the Shrine Circus. And more importantly, they do all their work for the cancer for children yeah. at no charge. Yeah. And it's yeah. amazing the work that the Shriners do. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyone who's raising money for sick kids gets, uh, gets all the credit in the world. Another example of volunteerism in Minnesota. Rounding the corner just now is our Woodbury Ambassadors, another one of those local communities we were talking about earlier. The Woodbury Ambassador Royal Family have been in existence for over 35 years. We have Miss Woodbury, Bree Colina, Woodbury Princesses, Isabel Orton, Ava Cheney, and Alexa Fryer, our Woodbury Senior Queen, Barb Cook, and our little Woodbury, Alexa Fryer and Sophia Fox. Nice job, Woodbury. Hey, Barb. Hey there, ladies. We had an amazing time at this festival this past year. They always throw a good one. Now, you have some familiarity with our next group, right, Effie? I might know the Farmington Ambassador Program. In fact, I celebrated my 10-year anniversary last year with them. The Farmington Ambassador Program exists to provide opportunities to young women and girls from the Farmington area. They gain poise, speaking abilities, and community service experience through their time. 
We've got our Miss Ambassadors. Uh, we've got Reese Halda, Amelia Weiber, and Paige Gerlock. And our Junior Ambassadors, Riley Halda, Addison Johnson, and Cicely Sylvester. The Ambassadors travel near and far to share the Farmington story and goodwill learning skills that will be invaluable throughout their life. Well, I don't think that was in the script, Effie. <laughs> I think you knew all that from when you were an ambassador yourself. Good I have job. a little bit of a connection to these guys, too, as my captain, Paulette Christopher, yes. uh, worked with Farmington for many, many years. She well, has. let's welcome Cottage Grove, the Strawberry Fest. Again, this is another event planned by all volunteer committee. Their mission is to bring community together. At the event, residents, businesses, city government, and nonprofit organizations all come together to proudly celebrate their community. It's I think Winter Carnival, you go to Cartage Grove for their coronation, don't you? We did. It's amazing to see so many of these communities that we got to spend our year with coming here today. I think we had, what, 44 parades that we went to? And uh, they all, you know, we reciprocate. They come here, we go there. That's right. It's all about communities coming well, together. You probably did what, about 400 events? Oh, we had, we had over, yeah, almost 400 appearances. Yeah, so it's quite a, and these folks had a pretty active week from what I've seen uh, pictures online of you guys sleeping on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I, <laughs> it, it can be pretty tough, tough to go. Next up, we've got the Invergrove Heights Scholarship Program. The Invergrove Heights Scholarship Program is a nonprofit organization completely supported by fundraisers and the generous support of our sponsors. Our committee coordinate, coordinates our events to run in parallel and cooperate with the Invergrove Heights Day celebration. We have Miss Invergrove Heights Stephanie up there. We have Miss Invergrove Heights Princess Rhiannon up there. Little Miss Invergrove Heights Evelyn. Little Miss Invergrove Heights Princess Annalee and Little Miss Invergrove Heights Princess to Riley. And our current Queen of the Snows, Liv Swenson, actually has long ties with this program. We've got our Robbinsdale Whiz Bang Days Ambassadors celebrating their 75th annual festival, July 6th to the 9th, 2023. Whiz Bang Days is a community-sponsored city celebration that honors the small-town caring attitude that their residents have and Captain Billy's Whiz Bang Publications that was founded. Well, here we have Miss Robbinsdale, Hannah Holtz, our Robbinsdale Princess, Isabel Schmitz, Robbinsdale Ambassadors, Izzy Link and Lizzie Madsen, and our Junior Ambassador, Isaiah Madsen. Well, let's welcome Osceola Ambassadors. Hello, Osceola, welcome. Osceola, we got Sydney Cameron, Alexis Peckman, Leela Kohler, and Abby Williams. Junior Ambassadors, Laney DeMulling, Regan Kulzer, and Lily Brugman. And Little Ambassador, Cora Oy, and Nora Kohler. Welcome to St. Paul. Nice to have you with us, Osceola, Wisconsin. Here comes the St. Louis Park Ambassadors from our St. Louis Park Parktacular. They represent and promote the St. Louis Park community through participation in community festivals throughout Minnesota and Wisconsin. In addition, as Goodwill Ambassadors for the St. Louis Park community, they volunteer with numerous service projects and community outreach efforts, including St. Louis Park Elementary Schools Family Fun Nights and School Carnivals, the Special Olympic Sports Tournaments, Step Food and Essential Drives, Park Cleanups, Team Me Up for Teens Backpack Packing, and many, many more. Well, we got a great turnout tonight. It's just gorgeous here. You can see all of the uh, sculptures lit up, uh, all the folks who came out to join us. Everybody was tired of being cooped up, I think, in the cold weather and came out to see us tonight. Well, it's a beautiful city, it's a beautiful park, and it's a wonderful festival. But I don't know, I got this feeling that something extraordinary might happen this year. I, think, I don't know, I we, think we what got a new Boreas, I, I, I don't know what, something crazy might happen. I think he's talking about the Vulcan victory dance. 
which will be right after the uh, overthrow down at the Intercontinental. And I've heard uh, rumors they're going to serve alcohol this year. Yeah, but Tom, don't you think that's a little <laughs> premature to have a Vulcan victory dance and schedule all this? I mean, we got a strong crew here tonight. I think something might happen that never has happened before. Well, I don't know. We want to welcome the we'll Pistons Fest, Glencoe Royalty. 161 years ago, a German singing society in Young America began a music festival that has grown and evolved over the years to continue to proudly be Minnesota's oldest consecutive celebration. Stiftungsfest is an annual celebration that honors strong German heritage in the community of Norwood and Young America. Stiftungsfest, which means Founders Day celebration in German, will mark its 162nd year in 2023. I'll try saying that. that Winter Carnival, fast. there's something to Good aspire job. to. Good there job go. on that, FE. I couldn't pronounce that myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all let you have that one. <laughs> you might have too many cocktails and you see you got a stiffen fest. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> ben I don't know what's, what's going on, Tom, behind us here? Well, I believe we have the royal family with us now. They're here to defend their, their reign. I think they're prepared. Are you going to support them, folks? Just don't even think about the fact that they were responsible for this year, week of weather. <laughs> I don't know. Boreas looks awful determined tonight. That's well, um, a strong-looking group. I, I don't know. I don't know where the guards are, though. They left. Oh, they're, they left. Oh, the guards are ready, I think. Oh, there they know. are. There they are. I know that Gary continues himself to be a Churchillian uh, prime minister, so... All the way from Lakeville, Pano Prague is their annual summer festival marking the panorama of progress. With us tonight, we have Miss Lakeville, Kate O'Reilly, Lakeville Princess, Leo Willingham, Lakeville Princess, Mary Claire Patterson, Little Master Lakeville, Parker Cable, and Little Miss Lakeville, Ruby Berenger. Welcome, Pano Prague. And that's an awful great parade that they have in Lakeville. Uh, what a turnout they had there this past year, Effie. There must have been 10,000 people at that. Just great. Well, if you, it's just a gorgeous night here. After the parade, we're gonna have fireworks, folks, so don't, don't leave. Yeah, they are the, spectacular. They're right over the top yeah, of the park. Yeah, they're going to happen right in the yeah. park. Uh, as I said, then, there's a party at the International Continental. You can stick around, look at the uh, sculptures. They're absolutely gorgeous at night. There's uh, still lots of food venues out there and opportunities to uh, have a little bit to eat. Feel free to go to the restaurants in downtown St. Paul and enjoy this great city. You know, Tom, I think there is going to be fireworks here. You think might be this I, I don't know. What do you think, Boreas? Boreas, do you think there'll be a little fireworks here tonight? You got to defend the palace. I think there might be fireworks here. I don't know if your guards, are they up for it? Are they fired up? How about your wind brothers? Are you guys ready? Yes. Okay. Well, here, maybe we can, maybe we can give you guys a little cheer here. So how many are here to support Boreas in the overthrow tonight? Hail Boreas. Literally. How, how many are here to support Vulcan? Oh, I don't know. It's, well, uh, I don't know. It sounded pretty close, didn't it? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I really think you're in great shape. <laughs> there are a solid six people right here that were clearly on your side. <laughs> no doubt. You have, you have tens of people supporting you. Yeah. Tens of people. All right, folks, we got North Star Recreation joining us. Welcome, North Star. We're glad you came to see us this year. So, Billy, do you know North Star? Have you done anything with them? Well, yeah, they're, uh, you know, they're, uh, it's, a, it's an ice castle dealership located in Owatonna, Minnesota. So they came all the way from Owatonna to see and us. Isn't that great? At, and look at these RV trailers. They're unbelievable. They're the number one drop-down recreational vehicle. And uh, North Star Recreation, they specialize in custom-designed ice castles that are perfect for camping, fishing, and other outdoor activities. 
with a full service department and retail store, you can be confident that North Star Recreation is what you need. Maybe you guys can help us build a nice castle for next year. What do you think? I think we're ready for one. What do you think, Tom? I think that looks a lot warmer. Yeah, well, there's rumors that there might be a nice castle next year. I don't know. That would be great. Uh, next, we've got Sunbelt Rentals. Sunbelt Rentals offers a variety of best-selling equipment. They are your one-stop source to quickly and easily provide the equipment, solutions, and services you need. And Sunbelt's real located right over there in Woodbury and Afton. They got a big facility there. Nice to have you with us, Sunbelt. That's a serious portable generator. I'm sure they probably provided some generators here in Rice Park this year. That's probably true. Probably true. Well, it looks like the Sleigh Bell Dancers have joined us again this year. This is a great group. They perform through the Twin Cities area during the holiday season and spread great cheer and they make spirits bright. This group is celebrating 15 years under director Lori Goldstein, choreography by Heather Hildebrandt, and you can check them out at sleighbelldancers.com. Now, Boreas, I don't want you to get nervous about all those sirens. I'm sure they're coming to help you. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of flashing lights and I'm afraid I'm afraid of the onslaught. I mean, I, 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 I'm not sure five guards is the right number to bring. <laughs> well, Vulcan, oh. Vulcan wins the sound contest every year, that's for sure. No doubt. Now, what do you got the sleigh bell dancers here? They're ba yeah, we did them. Effie, you got the sleigh bell dancers? Yeah, we're at the La Center Fire Department, I believe. Oh, Welcome I to the Volunteer part. City of La Center. Uh, fire department. The personnel consists of 25 paid on-call firefighters. The center fire department operates out of one fire station protecting their community in, uh, in rural La center with two tankers and one pickup slash grass rig. Well, here's our media grand marshals from KDWB. We have Dave Ryan. Dave Ryan. He's the play-by-play -play announcer and reporter at KDWB and host of the Dave Ryan Morning Show, and he's here with Fallon. They're riding in. Whoa, there, that's good. You can feel it all the way up here. Boy, that fire's gonna get everybody a little anxious up here at the palace. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, it sounds like there's some kind of an emergency. Uh, sirens and uh, fire trucks. Uh, what do you think's going on? I, I, I'm trying to anticipate what's happening here. Well, I haven't seen any torches. Usually we see torches. I think these are our Grand Marshals of Public Safety. We got Bob Fletcher and the Backseaters from Live on Patrol. Sheriff Bob Fletcher is a lifelong Ramsey County resident, coach, and volunteer. A husband and a father of four, he is currently serving a fifth term as Ramsey County Sheriff. Well, needless to say, there's not a new sheriff in town. <laughs> After five terms, there's not a new sheriff in town. Thank you, Bob, for your service. Keep up the good work, buddy. Uh, previously served as a St. Paul Police Commander, Mayor of Adnes Heights, and a two-term St. Paul City Council member. He's a graduate of North St. Paul High School and my alma mater, Hamlin University. Now, Effie, what do you know about this Hudson, uh, North Hudson Pepper Festival? North Hudson Pepper Fest hosts an annual spaghetti eating contest. How did we do in that spaghetti eating contest? I, I, I remember I was a mess when I was finished. I ate half a pound of spaghetti in under one minute this year. My God. <laughs> you know, I, I, for all of you out there that think that sounds easy, try it. <laughs> when they ask if you want sauce, you say yes. <laughs> 
Well, they, they ask if you want a second helping, and you say no. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, North Hudson. We've got our Pepper King and our North Hudson ambassadors up there. I don't know what's going on here, well, Tom. Well, folks, you're starting to see the Vulcan crews come. We'll have Vulcans. We talked about the uh, paternal orders here. Vulcan, these are past Vulcans and their families. They come from 2001, 2007, 2009, 2011, 2012, 2014, 2016, and 2017. There are over 200 Vulcan alumni. It's amazing. Now we do no have, wonder they win every year. We have some visiting royalty here uh, oh, from uh, Tallahassee. Uh, Bowlegs is here from uh, uh, Fort Walton Beach. Hey, welcome uh, all you from Florida. Welcome, Florida. We love having you I here. I bet you enjoyed the week. <laughs> I hope we gave you enough cold weather to enjoy going back home again. Here are the folks who did the snow sculpting. If you haven't been out to the fairgrounds to see the, the snow uh, sculptures, they're really quite a sight. It's a lot of fun. Something to take the kids to. That's still open tomorrow, too. Yes, absolutely. So they can go do that. That's something to a, do tomorrow. they got a maze out there, a, a maze for the kids. And the weather's got a little warmer. They might enjoy it a little Perfect. better. It's supposed to be really nice tomorrow. Whoa, look who's here in his shorts. <laughs> Deer sucker all year long. Mr. Patel, how are you? Well, I don't know what's going on, but there's a lot of fire engines, and I'm getting a little nervous. I don't understand what's happening here. Well, I, I think you uh, may have experienced this in the past. Well, uh, a little de deja vu for you. You know, how, how, can, how can children not enjoy all these fire trucks, though? I mean, this is what it's all about, right? Oh, yes. Fire trucks of all different vintages. It is a fun thing to see. And a lot of red out there, uh, Brent. Um, yeah, they're, looking, they're looking more and more confident. They seem to be having a I mean, very good time. I'm starting to get a feeling of, a, of some kind of an uprising. <laughs> I'd like to say the people standing behind me look fierce, but I'm not sure that's the right word. I'd be uh, more elegant. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I... Wow, we have Ashes 83 celebrating 40 years. Count of Ashes. That's great, congratulations. And look at the Dalmatian on top. It looks a little stuffed. <laughs> I mean, it had a good dinner, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Hail the Count of Ashes. Well, folks, we've been seeing some hot air balloons tonight. Those are all sponsored by Pilot Gaming. It feels great when you're near them. <laughs> that right. So here they're going to be our... jamming in here, folks. It won't be too long, and the battle will begin. Here... Oh, no, I'm starting to see some torches on the horizon. Well, here come our festival chairs, Jeff and Natalka McDonald and Scott and Holly Cucciarella. Also known as the Fearsome Foursome, these folks handle the coordination of the entire Winter Carnival. Each of these chairs have played a legend role in Winter Carnival history. Uh, Jeff and Scott are both members, uh, former members of Vulcan Cruise. Holly was a bouncing girl for the bouncing team. And Natalko was an aquatennial princess across the river in Minneapolis. They cool. supervise over hundreds of volunteers at all of the events, and judging by their smiles, they are enjoying every minute of it. Well, Brent, this looks suspicious. The west winds are making a second run. I believe those are the south winds. Or the that south is, winds. That is south suspicious. Winds. Sorry, sorry. The south winds are coming again. Yeah, you just don't want to tarnish the good name of the west winds who are famous for their loyalty. Yeah. Ole! I knew it was something like that. <laughs> You know, the South Winds are known for bridging the gap. So it would be a gap. really bad sign if they <laughs> came, huh? Yeah. Well, you know, the South Winds have been known to uh, help Vulcan. Not that it looks like Vulcan needs a lot of help. No, no, they look strong today. They look hungry. The South Wind Princess in particular uh, makes peace between the Vulcan crew and the royal family. So maybe she'll have a little extra pull not this sure year. Vul that's, 
They're having well, trouble making so, the turn. <laughs> well, the Southwind Princess has been known to try to talk Notos from defecting. And really, it really comes down to the princess, oftentimes. I was going to say, she had a lot of success. <laughs> well, yeah, they've had some success over the years. Uh, Allegedly, she uh, defected herself one year. It seems like we have a standoff here. We have the uh, guard truck is standing off the south winds. So there still may be some hope here for uh, Boreas. Well, you... I see torches coming though, Tom. So do I. I, I see so torches I. Uh, near the Ordway uh, entrance over there, and I'm starting to get a little nervous. I, I know how this was a year ago, and uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned. Oh, and the fire, I mean, we really, and things are starting to back up. They've really backed. I'm not sure how they're gonna get everybody in here. Well, the torches are getting closer though. I, 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 I'm trying to comprehend what's going on, and I, I see people with uh, fire helmets on. Um, well, again, folks, after the uh, attempted overthrow, I'll give fair, you a little break there, okay? Fair, fair enough. In the, in the event they're successful, there is a party at the Intercontinental Hotel for the Vulcan Victory Dance. It's a lot of fun. If you don't have tickets, you can buy them at the door. This park's still open. If you haven't seen the sculptures, you should spend some time looking at them. I can tell you from here, it's amazing. The colors are great. It's just downtown St. Paul is so beautiful the week of Carnival, isn't it? Right, Rice Park is the most beautiful place in the Twin Cities right now. By the way, I will tell you that I suspect in the very unlikely event that they don't win tonight, that the Vulcans will still throw their party. I, I think it would be unlikely that they would not have a party. Yeah, they, they enjoy their parties. Well, folks, thank you for coming out tonight. We've got a great crowd out here. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch this uh, the struggle. It's an epic struggle, winter versus summer. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know what's coming upon us here, Tom. Can you explain? Well, what, I, I, I'm, I'm a little phenomenon? curious if there's any Boreas supporters left as yeah. they've seen this uh, moving in here. I mean, I see fire, I see red. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of uh, well, this is, white. This is when you know where I'm seeing red came from. As I, yes, uh, yes. Well, Moses parted the Red Sea. <laughs> it's possible. We, we, it has, there has been precedent. Well, that, it's been uh, almost as long since Boreas won. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do, is he coming tonight? Because that seems like big news. I don't know. We, we may need to pray for Moses. You know, I, I haven't know. seen Volcanus Rex 85 yet, though, have you? No. Where is he? We've got a lot of past Vulcans here. You know, some of these Vulcans are aging. We might see. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. There seems to be a crowd uh, gathering near the entrance of the palace. Well, here come the Vulcan torches. Yeah, the torches well, I still are haven't coming. seen Volcanus Rex. Do uh, you think there's any chance he didn't make it? Well, maybe he went back. I mean, uh, I, maybe it's just a little too cold for the Vulcan. Oh, I see him. He's here. Volcanus Rex 85. Where? There he is. All right, folks, welcome him. Volcanus Rex 85 and the 2023 Vulcan crew. Hail the Vulc. Oh, I, I can't say that. <laughs> I can. Hail the Vulc. Yeah. yeah. So I, here they're, they're here to defend the 136 wins in a row. Can they do it tonight? Can we hear it for Vulc? I All right, they're starting to come down here. Well, Boreas, are you ready to defend yourselves? Well, 
folks, we want to thank you again for coming. Don't miss the fireworks spectacular right out here afterwards. And make sure you go to the uh, Vulcan Victory Dance. It's a great celebration. And that'll be at the Intercontinental Hotel. There's live entertainment, dancing drinks, and a lot more heat. So join us there afterwards. And thank us. Thanks for joining SBNN today for the uh, St. Paul Winter Carnival. This is the coolest celebration on Earth. And now we're going to find out just how long winter's going to last. <laughs> A long time. Where did the king, did the king leave? <laughs> uh oh, here comes all Candace Rex. So folks, let's hear it. There he is. The man of the hour. Can they do it? I'm looking, we've got the guard looks. Where is the guard? Oh, there they are. <laughs> Boreas, come out, Boreas. Well, there are sick guards. Your six time guards. has come. No more games. Volcanus is here to end your reign. Come out, show yourself. I tell you, Volcanics, take your rusty cave dwellers and go home. <laughs> Look out into this crowd, Boreas. Every one of these people, these great people of St. Paul, have the mark of Volcanus. They are tired of this cold weather. They don't want you any here anymore. We're going to take you down whether you like it or not. I don't care. We still have the fun and frolic of winter. We still enjoy the ice skating and the snow throwing. No more talk, Boris. Today is warmer. I gave you your time. Your time is up. No way. Well, folks, I think it's going to start. Vulcan's planning his attack. The guard's pretty formidable, all six of them. Oh, no success. Boreas is gaining confidence. Keep an eye on the south wind, though, folks. Falcon's been known to recruit them. <laughs> guards, here they come. All right, guards, are you Get ready? ready. Here they come. No. No toast. No toast, do not go. No toast. Do not leave. No. Come back. Wind has defected. Well, guards are in a perilous position now. What the hell? What do you think, Queen? Uh, this is going to be a serious attack, folks. They're planning. I think it's time to retreat to Mount Olympus. Let's go. <laughs> oh.
Congratulations, Volcanus Rex. Were, were you worried, folks? No, no, great job from Vulcan. Welcome, it's good to see you. So some of you met Vulcan a little earlier tonight, Volcanus Rex, he's gonna, this is where we find out more about you. Where's the mic? There. There. We, we have to unarm him. All right, are we ready, Volcanus? Oh, the people of St. Paul, you're wonderful. We bring the heat back. You want the warm weather. What a wonderful night. What a great crew. They stormed the palace and banished Boreas. He's gone again and summer is coming back. So Volcanus, introduce yourself. Let's see who are you. Well, my name is Volcanus Rex the 85th, the true and victorious king of Winter Carnival. And before I reveal myself to you, I just want to say this. All of these people in red on the Royals, all these people carrying torches, volunteering their time, they're all volunteers here to put on this for you every year, bring summer back to St. Paul and act this for us because we love this city. They're all volunteers. So give them a good round of applause. So Volcanus, you've been doing a lot this week, haven't you? We have. And all of your crew? Yes, they have. So what kind of activities have you been at? We've been on the go every day, 6 a.m. till 11 or 12 at night for the last 10 days, visiting schools, nursing homes, doing appearances, doing charity events. Then we go to Fire and Brimstone events, which is us Vulcan events here. And then we uh, end up causing a lot of problems at Boreas's events at night. So not only did you bring in summer, but you've now just started. You folks have 10 days today, but what happens the rest of the year? This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. It doesn't end here. Obviously, this is the biggest part of our, our year, but the rest of the year we'll be visiting festivals, uh, charity events, doing appearances, etc., throughout the United States and Minnesota. We'll, we'll do probably over 150 events. So it's a great organization. Well, you know what? They want to meet you. Yep. Oh, and there's just a couple of things I want to say. I want to thank some people real quick. Promise I won't bore you. But I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the Lord. So I want to give him praise. But I also want to say this. You know, my uh, Vulcan advisors, my uh, briefing kings, Dave Breen, Perry LaBelle, Paul Knudsen, Todd Miller, um, Jason Bradshaw, Division 5 Sheet Metal, George and Morgan Harriet. Um, there's so many people, Tough Jersey, Dave Larson, uh, all the people in red, my crew, fantastic crew, their seasoned crew already, um, everybody in Fire and Brimstone that's been supportive. Uh, this is just one big family here. And so I know I'm probably missing a lot of people, but I don't want to bore you, but I will tell you, I'm going to have my guys do this first, introduce themselves and reveal themselves to you, and then I'll, I'll take my mask off and then we'll go declare an end to this thing, have some fireworks, and then go have some fun. How are you guys doing? I am the Duke of Flinker. I'm the Fire King's aide of camp. I'm the herder of the flock, and I'm the longest burning ember. And my name is Josh Knudsen, and I'm from Hudson, Wisconsin. Hey, all of you. Just want to thank my work, Waste Management, Justin Grady, Matt, my district manager for supporting me in the opportunity. My dad, Volcanus Rex, is 76. Paul Knudsen, the true king of the St. Paul Winter Carnival, for guiding me through this and supporting me and my beautiful wife, Chrissy. And my dog, Betty. I love you all. Hail the Volk and have a great time. Good luck with all of you. 
Oh, sorry. I am Count Embryus. Fire King's Chancellor to Exchequer. The young and romantic one. And I am the youngest of the crew. I am Nick Leach, hailing from a great city of Woodbury. I am Prince of Soot, recorder of the past memories. I'm also the ladies' man. I'm also the oldest of the crew. I'm also the oldest of the crew. My real name is Ken Lehman. I grew up in St. Paul. I now reside in Somerset, Wisconsin. I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ken. I am Count Ash. I am the raising of sleeping spirits, the swimmer of the crew. My real name is Will Kamek from St. Paul, Minnesota. Hail the vault! I am Baron Hot Sparkus. I'm the commander of the Lancers Legion. I'm the stoker of emotions. The spark plug of the Vulcan crew. Hail the Vulcan! <laughs> My real name is Andy Tupman. I reside in North St. Paul. I am General Flamus, Army Commander and Keeper of the Flame. Legend has it, if the flame dies, the king dies, and it'll be winter forever. But not on my watch. I am Scott Keister, originally from Stillwater, Minnesota, now living in Woodbury. Hi, kids. Sabine and Tristan, Dad, love you. I am Grand Duke Fertilius, the Minister of Propaganda and the Propagator of Progeny. I have the most kids of any crew. Eleven. My real identity is John DeLeon, Stillwater, Minnesota. And I am Volcanus Rex, the 85th, the true king of the St. Paul Winter Carnival. My real name is Ivan Weiss Jr. I hail from Stillwater, reside in Stillwater currently, but I've St. Paul's always been a second home since my father's business was here, and I used to be a resident here. But I love St. Paul, and I love all you. Thank you so much. All right. All right, thank you, Ivan. Great. Let's hear it again for Volcanus Rex and his crew. Let's hear it for summer. All right, join us at the Vulcan Victory uh, Dance down at the Intercontinental Hotel. And now you can enjoy the fireworks. Thank you all for coming out to the coolest celebration on earth, the St. Paul Winter Carnival. Have a great night. Woo!